All right, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be doing the rapid fire book tag. I think I've done this before. This might be a different one. There's a lot of questions in this one, uh, but Alan at the Library of Alexandria tagged me. I've seen a few people do this recently. Uh, Durfee's video was hilarious, um, but I I'm super far behind on doing tags. So I figured I just got tagged. I might as well do it. There's a bunch that I've been tagged in over the last couple of months that I just totally forgot about, blanked on them. I'll get to them eventually, I promise. But let's go ahead with these 50 questions and I will try my best to keep this rapid fire. Hardback or paperback? Hardback, they look nicer, they feel better, they're prettier. Ebooks are physical? Physical, but I do like having an ebook once in a while just to be able to take on the go because I don't want to carry big hardbacks or anything around with me. Traveling, ebooks are great, but if I'm just sitting at home reading, physical. Secondhand or new? Uh, it doesn't really matter. The only issue with secondhand is that they're usually destroyed. So probably new, but if I find a good condition secondhand, I, I'll take the discount. Audiobooks or nah? Yes, I do audiobooks literally all the time. Do you cover by? Absolutely. Uh, cover buying is what got me to the Rage of Dragons and several other books. I usually just pick things up that look cool. Uh, sometimes I'll look up some, you know, either Goodreads or just, you know, question my friends if they've read it, if something's good. But yeah, absolutely cover buy. Favorite cover that I own is going to be, shit, it's over there. Hold on. Ugh. It's got to be my Subterranean Press Dark Age. Red Rising, book five. That bad boy right there. You know what, you're just, you're just gonna sit right there, Darrow, okay? Ugh, get the mic back on the shirt. First book I ever read, I have no idea. Uh, something in grade school, so I have no idea. The last book I finished, I just finished up Peace Talks, book 16 of the Dresden Files, about Two hours ago. Last book that I bought uh, would be the Two Signs Zach Argyle hardcovers. Uh, these ones. Favorite genre? What is my favorite book in that genre? Ooh, a single book? That would be tough, man, because I like a lot of series. I, single book. Royal Assassin was my favorite book so far, fantasy-wise, that I read this year. Last year it was Words of Radiance. I don't know. I love all kinds of stuff. We'll just, we'll say it's one of those for now. What do I never reach for? Literally anything that's not sci-fi, fantasy, or horror. Pretty much everything else, I, I don't care. Do I read poetry? No. Popular science? Okay, so I assume this is just an extension of this. I don't know what popular science books are. I read science fiction, so I, I'm gonna guess no. Middle grade, uh, not since I read Harry Potter a million years ago as they came out. So I haven't read, to my knowledge, I haven't read any middle grade in a long time. What's my favorite bookish item? I don't really like collect bookish items. I don't know, my 3D printed Wheel of Time thing up here or like a bookmark maybe. What's the strangest object I've used as a bookmark? Um, I, I'm one of those guys that does not like putting weird things in my books. I don't dog ear books. I don't put uh, those little green Starbucks things that you plug in the top of a cup with that my wife tends to use randomly. Um, I, I, I use bookmarks because that's all that should go in a book. I don't use any spaghetti dinners or ice cream sandwiches or anything else. Book jackets or not? Nah. Yeah, they they look great. The artwork's usually awesome. Uh, I don't read with them on though because it's a lot nicer to just hold the, the hardcover without the, the slip on it. It's kind of clunky and annoying and you can mess it up and no, take it off for reading. Who's my fictional boyfriend? Hey, um, how the fuck do you answer a question like this? Who, who wrote this? A child? Favorite book couple? I mean, I don't, I don't really read books for couples. I don't know. Uh, what are some good ones? A lot of fantasy is not very good at love stories are making believable couples. So off the top of my head, it's gonna bleed into sci-fi territory because it's sci fantasy. I'm not gonna name the characters for spoiler purposes, but it's from Red Rising and I love them. Favorite book villain. I don't know, favorite villain, it's tough because there's not a lot of good ones. A lot of them are pretty mustache twirly. I'm sure I could think of another one if I thought about it a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna say Nicodemus from Dresden Files. He's definitely one of 
one of my go-to like best villains that I've read. Favorite book, Friendship, Darrow and Severo come to mind from Red Rising once again. I really like the budding friendship of Kaladin and Adolin in Stormlight Archive. I really like, ooh, another good relationship. Ah, see, some of these relationships are spoilers. Because if I say something from Mistborn, there's, there's a relationship in Mistborn that I like, uh, as well as friendships. Hmm, yeah. I guess the other uh, friendship that would stick out to me is actually a group of friends, and that would be the Great Coats. So these, these gentlemen right here, because their, their banter and dialogue and general friendship and connection with each other is fantastic. Series, trilogies, or standalones, I honestly don't care. Uh, I think I'm more inclined to say standalones or trilogies at this point, probably why I'm stepping into more sci-fi in general. Fantasy series get a little long. Like Dresden, I'm about to read the 18th book. No, I'm about to read the 17th Dresden book of what is going to be 22 of them, and then another trilogy after that. Uh, I'm finishing up The Wheel of Time, which is 14 books. I'm reading Stormlight, which is going to be 10 books. Like A lot of them are very long series. I, I like trilogies, but I mean, if they're good, I don't care. Write as many as you want, but yeah. There's a lot of long series. Weird reading habit. I guess this would be a weird reading habit. Uh, a lot of people do like ambient music and stuff when they read. I do that every once in a while too. Uh, I guess the, the weird one would be, if you, if you know who Terry Crews is, he's hilarious first of all, but he's also a really good artist. So usually as like a soothing sort of like background noise to when I read sometimes, I'll put on this YouTube video of Terry Crews painting a Christmas tree because it's just delightful. What's my favorite book adaptation? Uh, hopefully Dune when I see it. Uh, I'd say right now though, it has to still be Lord of the Rings because it was great. I mean, the those movies are just incredible and probably one of the better adaptations, probably one of the better adaptations that I've seen. I really liked Harry Potter for the most part. From what I remember, those were pretty solid. Uh, it's not on here, but my worst book adaptation is probably the Aragon movie, but Lord of the Rings would take the cake here. Film or TV adaptations, I assume you're saying like pick one or the other. It really depends on the, the story you're trying to tell because something like A Song of Ice and Fire, I feel like there's so many moving parts and so much that happens or like Wheel of Time you need a show. I don't think you can wrap that up in a couple of movies. Um, I think that would be a terrible idea, actually. And something like Dune, for instance, uh, I, I would say like a trilogy would probably be a great way to do that novel. Uh, even, you know, bring in some of the, the sequels. It just, it really depends, man. I mean, if you look at something like Vikings on Amazon, that's what I would picture an adaptation of like Faithful in the Fallen being. So, or the Bloodsworn Saga. That, anything by John Gwynn I think would fit sort of like a TV narrative that way. Um, anything that I feel like if you have a lot of POV characters, a lot of like political stuff going on in the background, you have a lot of moving parts and you can't just shove it all into a two and a half hour flick because then it just dumbs everything down and streamlines, streamlines it too much. I feel like you would need to have a show, but certain things would be great as movies but probably not just like a single movie. What books need adaptations? Again, I'm gonna keep relying on uh, Red Rising. I know that Pierce Brown has gone back and forth with several studios and stuff about trying to get something greenlit for Red Rising. I read at some point that, that one of the TV adaptations that was potentially happening wanted Severo to be a girl and be a love interest of Darrow, which would have been a nightmare. Hopefully that happens at some point because I want to see those books adapted and that would be awesome. Um, what else? I mean, we, we tried Dresden with the sci-fi channel. That didn't go well. And I don't, I don't know. It would just be kind of goofy. I don't know. I guess like Faithful in the Fallen would be another cool one. Like we just talked about. Favorite book world. Uh, I love Discworld just because of how out there and bananas it can be and just how creative and crazy it is. Uh, I love a lot of sci-fi worlds that I've been reading. Just, I, I love that like glimpse into the future of potential like technologies and things like that as far as like a fantasy world i mean a lot of them you can love like i love the world of wheel of time i love the world building and the crafting of the story i would never want to live there because there's a lot of things that happen in most fantasy worlds that you don't want to experience uh lack of electricity running water 
Trollocs, uh, all kinds of bad guys that want to kill you, uh, people with powerful magic that would destroy you. There, a lot of these places aren't very nice. I'll, I'll put it that way. I mean, looking at my shelves here, so many of these places have great worlds, and they're well realized, and they're wonderfully written. I would not want to step foot in any of them. Like, Mistborn would be cool. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, you know, the sun's like permanently blotted out by ash. You would probably get lung cancer. You've got crazy Mistborn and stuff running around. Like, everyone's depressed and like dying. And oh, yeah, it'd be great. Favorite writing style? I don't know that I really have a favorite. It, I, I guess if I had to say my favorite would be sort of like a blend of flowery and straightforward. Because like, I love Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive. I love his approach at that. It's very straightforward, but at the same time, I love things like Dune or like Sun Eater, where it's a little bit more flowery or like a Robin Hobb where everything is very slow paced and very gorgeously written. I, I like sort of a balance in between. Uh, I, don't, I don't really read the book for the prose, but I can appreciate it when I notice it. Um, so yeah, I guess I don't have like a preferred one. I, I guess what I don't necessarily like is really dense writing where I feel like I have to study the book to actually understand it because that's a that's just not the kind of reader that I am. What's a book that you love that people don't know about? Well, I'm pretty sure everyone knows about everything that I'm reading because I'm late to the game coming back to all this last year and reading a bunch of stuff that everyone else has already read. So it's not like I can say that I've found really any sleeper hits. I mean, I guess I mean, the people don't know about, like, more people are starting to know about Brian Lee Durfee, Forgetting Moon, Black is Heart, because those are awesome. Still criminally underrated, currently. Uh, what else do people not know about, though? Like, what's, what's hiding back here? Nope, everyone knows about that. See, here's the issue, is I'm intentionally reading a bunch of things that are popular because I'm getting back into the genre as of last year. So, I mean, for the most part, all of this stuff, everybody knows. So the, the closest thing I would say would be Forgetting Moon. I mean, that's, that's really it. What's a popular book that I hated? See, hate is a very strong word. Uh, I very much disliked Ender's Game and was very underwhelmed by it. I, I don't necessarily think that I hate it. I think it's fun to shit on to people because people hold it up so highly as like the greatest sci-fi of all time, which is just, it's just not. Most of the other books that I haven't liked have pretty much been in line with a lot of people. Like, I don't hate, I guess I kind of hate Elantris. That book was kind of trash and most people like it. Favorite childhood reads? I mean, from what I can remember from like early, early age, I read a lot of like Captain Underpants and Magic Treehouse. That was like elementary school. And then I grew up reading, you know, Harry Potter, Aragon. So those were probably like my go-to when I was younger. A book that changed my life. I don't really react that kind of, that level of emotional, that what? I don't really react that, I don't get that emotional typically with a book. Even if a book makes me feel something or cry or react strongly, it's not a life-changing thing for me. Like Robin Hobb has made me emotional. Chris Ferracchio has made me emotional. Dune at certain points made me emotional. But it, I wouldn't say it was a life-changing experience. Like, I don't have, like, a, a major memory or anything like that from a book that would I would consider it life-changing. What book did I hate in school? Probably anything that I was forced to read. A feel-good book. Well, let's just uh, get rid of, like, all of most of fantasy because none of this shit is happy. Honestly, from what I've read of Discworld, they're pretty feel-good because they're just... I feel kind of happy after reading them because there's a lot of humor, a lot of wit. <sighs> a book that made me cry. Um, I think all three of the Farseer books at least made me tear up once or twice. There was a, a wholesome moment in uh, Cold Days, which is book 15 of Dresden, 14, that made me tear up. Uh, almost cry. I mean, pretty much anything. I'm a big softie now since having kids. So usually when kids are involved in books and there's like a, a sweet relationship between like a parent and a child, that, that'll get to me. Um, 
some of the stuff in Farseer got to me just because it was just so tough. It's so rough, man, on these characters. So yeah, uh, back to like me being a softy, there is something that happens at the end of Morningstar, which is book three of the original Red Rising trilogy that definitely made me cry a little bit. That's my favorite reading snack. Uh, I'm one of those that doesn't really eat while he's reading. I don't like having stuff on my fingers and then touching my books. If I'm going to, it'll probably be something like pretzels or like popcorn, so where I can just like eat with my left hand and read with my right, but it doesn't honestly happen that often. Favorite reading position? Probably sitting on the couch, just kind of like with my legs laid out. Uh, I, I have some, like a, a chair and ottoman and stuff waiting to be shipped if I ever get my furniture that we ordered. Uh, so I honestly do most of my reading in my desk chair because that's just where I spend most of my time is in my office, at my computer, and that's sort of where I just usually kick back with a book. Uh, I usually recline it a little bit, so I'm just kind of like sitting back like this, you know, one of these. It, if you want from this angle, it, it kind of looks like this too, you know. Natural light or lamp light, it doesn't matter, whatever. If it's the middle of the day and I'm reading, I'll just open my windows because I have three windows right here. If it's at night, I'll turn on lights. I, I don't actually have a lamp. I have like my lamps up on my bookshelves and then I have an overhead light. So whatever's, whatever's bright and needed at the time. Outside or inside? I mean, I'm mostly sitting inside when I'm reading. If it's a really nice day, I'll go sit outside because it's gorgeous. Uh, if it's raining, for example, like sitting on my deck when it's raining would be pretty dope. Breaking the cover or keeping it smooth? Breaking the cover? I mean, I, I've broken a spine before. Who the, do you break the cover of your books? I'm confused. Don't, don't break anything. Do you read in other languages? No, because I don't speak any other languages. What book series do I want to finish this year? I mean, some of these have already been ongoing, but I'm gonna wrap up, well, I'll be caught up on Dresden Files. I'm gonna finish Wheel of Time. Um, th those are like the main goals that I had this year was to be caught up on those. Um, I mean, something, so it's September, almost October now. I don't think I'm gonna start and finish any series unless they're short. Because that's, you know, a couple of books. Uh, maybe Dune by December, I could finish that that six book series, at least the Frank Herbert stuff, because um, I'm reading Messiah and Children next month. So I could potentially finish Dune, but nothing really pressing right now. Like y'all can watch my TBRs. I have a lot of books coming up that I want to read, but I, I'm not rushing to finish anything right now. What well, book release are, am I most excited about right now? Kingdoms of Death, book four, and now five of Sun Eater coming out next year. Uh, Rockio did just mention recently that there is apparently a uh, paper shortage. So Kingdoms of Death, book four of the Sun Eater series was initially, well, that's still coming out in April of next year. I have it pre-ordered, I think it's April, but he is now adding an additional 80,000 words and splitting the book per his publisher because he has to, <laughs> I guess. Otherwise it would delay the release of the book for who knows how long. So we're actually gonna get a book four and five, I believe both next year. So that's super cool. So those. Do I have a favorite book influencer? I mean, the only other kind of like book content I follow is on YouTube. So I've met a lot of friends on BookTube. So I mean, all of y'all that I'm friends with, that's super cool. Like they definitely, like my friends on, on YouTube influence my reading habits occasionally. Um, sometimes we very much disagree. I, I don't know. I, I, I like a lot of people. I follow a lot of book channels. So just, I'll, I'll just link a bunch of channels down in the description. Do I have a channel blog or social media feed? No, I don't. I don't even have a YouTube channel. This isn't real. Tag my friends. Okay. Since this is how I always do these tags, I, I don't prepare. So I don't actually know. So I don't actually know who's been tagged. So I'm just gonna go down the list because this is how I prepare for these videos. Andrew, you're tagged, buddy. Chase, unless you're not making videos anymore. Tag, you're tagged. <laughs> Make it if you want. I'm going to tag Elliot, unless you've done this. I don't know, I can't keep track of your video schedule. Have you done this? You're tagged. I'm going to tag... I'm also tagging Jake. And I'm going to tag. I'm gonna tag Leanna. All right, you know what, here, we're gonna, I'm just tagging all my friends. So Jesse, 
Jade, I know you're busy. If you have time, you're tagged. Elliot, I already said to you. Alan, Jashana, I already said Leanna. Who else? Jimmy, tagged, whatever. Whoever else wants to do this, tag yourself, make a video. There's no rules here. I, I'm not the Lord ruler or anything like that. So you know what? Tagged, done. That was, that felt like way more than 50 because I talked for a while. I don't think that was very rapid fire. That was more of like a steady, steady firing pace. But here we are. There's the 50 questions. Done. Thanks for the tag, Alan. Love you guys. Bye.